My next topic, ladies and gentlemen, is how the cross of Christianity, the cross of Christ, destroys Islam. Now, let me explain what I mean by that. The destroyer on his home ground. If two people make a claim about something and their claims are different and contradictory, what is the normal thing to do? You look for other evidence to verify one of the two claims or to disprove both claims. No, the Christian faith is centered on the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ. Along with his resurrection, that is the central doctrine of the Christian faith. Now, ladies and gentlemen, why do we believe in the crucifixion? I want you to approach this not as a Christian, but as an intelligent person rationalizing based upon historical evidence. So you're looking for evidence that is early, close to the time, written by people who had a reasonable chance of witnessing the events, who were giving their evidence in the culture and the language of the people of the region. You're looking for independent attestations of the same testimony. So multiple witnesses independently verifying the same thing. We Christians have this. In the Gospel of Matthew, the Gospel of Mark, the Gospel of Luke, the Gospel of John, the writings of Paul, the writings of Ignatius, the writings of Irenaeus, the writings of Polycarp, the writings of Papias, and that's just to name the Christians. But it gets better. The, it gets better. We don't just have Christians testifying to the crucifixion. We also have Jews, Jewish historians, like Tassian, like Josephus, Jewish and Roman historians who were not Christian. And they testify to the fact that Jesus Christ was crucified. And all of these writers were written in either the years 0 to 100 or a handful were written between the years 100 and 200 AD. In other words, solid historical evidence of the crucifixion. If we cannot know that Jesus Christ was crucified, then we can't know anything about history at all. Ladies and gentlemen, critics of the Christian faith, apostates from the Christian faith, people who have built their entire career attacking the Christian faith, like Dr. Bart Ehrman, state that the crucifixion is the most certain fact of the birth of Jesus Christ apart from the fact that he was born. Now, compare the claims of Islam. The Quran, written 600 years later, over a thousand miles away by a man that could not possibly be a witness to any event states that they did not crucify him but it was made to appear that they crucified him so in other words 
according to the Quran, the God of Islam lied to the people 600 years ago before Muhammad and made it look like Jesus had been crucified when he hadn't. And on the other side, we have the most surest claim in history of Christ's crucifixion. No, if two people are saying contradictory things, what do you do? You look for other evidence to see which claim is true. And when we do that, we find that the claims of the Christian faith are historical fact. And if those claims are historical fact, we find that the claims of Islam are false and therefore Islam is untrue. You should follow that which leads you to truth, not that which is evidently a lie. And the Quran itself witnesses against itself. The Quran says, if this book was from any other than Allah, they, meaning me, would find contradictions in it. And I do find contradictions in it. And it has contradicted the full weight and evidence of history. The cross of Christ destroys Islam. Any questions going once? Any questions going twice? Any questions going... What about the spiritual meaning behind the cross? You know the historic, is that it? Just an event or is there more to it? So the question is, what about the spiritual meanings of the cross? Now I wanted to talk about an historical event. But why do we Christians think that the cross is so important. Think about it, ladies and gentlemen. You're walking down the street and you see someone having an electric chair as a jewel on their neck on a necklace. Wouldn't you find that distasteful? Wouldn't you find that cross to make as a jewel this form of execution but yet ladies and gentlemen that is exactly what the Christians did why because we saw in the cross of Christ the fulfillment of the prophets of Israel the fulfillment of the mosaic religion that God would save his people from their sins. The nunc dimittis that we find in the Gospel of Luke was when Simeon looked upon the Lord Jesus Christ and he said, Now, Lord, let thou thy servant depart in peace, for mine eyes have seen your salvation a light unto the Gentiles and the sword will pierce your heart also he said to Mary Jesus Christ's death upon the cross is the fulfillment of the Mosaic law where they sacrificed lambs on atonement day for the sins of Israel Christ died on the cross as the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Your sins, my sins, that gift was given to you freely. You have it already. It's with you now. 
All you need to do is accept it. Any other questions on the topic before I stop? Questions going once. Questions going twice. Questions going three times. Thank you very much. Going to take a break. God bless you. There you go.